Welcome back to the series where I test the old school RuneScape wiki's money making methods. And if you like these videos, feel free to check out the playlist in the description box down below. But with that being said, let's jump into today's video. Welcome to season 8 of Test No Osiris Wiki Money Making Methods. And today's money maker is going to be making redwood pile logs. Before we go into the requirements, I just want to let everyone know that this method is very click intensive. So this means it might not be for everybody. The requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. First of all, you'll need to have completed the Shades of Marton quest, as this is required so you can have access to the Sacred Oil. The only other requirement for this video is to have around 8 million in starting capital, as you will need this to buy all of the Sacred Oils and all of the Redwood Logs you will need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now with that being said, let's jump into my inventory. All I have in my inventory is 14 sacred oils and 14 redwood logs. Because you have to click between the two, I would recommend for you all to set up your inventory like mine is on screen. This will consist of four separate columns. The first column will be logs, the second column will be oils, the third column will be logs again, and then the fourth and final column will be oils. But with that being said, let's go over some information about this method. Redwood logs are created by using one sacred oil on a pair of redwood logs. This will grant the player 16 fire making experience and these redwood pyre logs are used during the Shades of Marton minigame. They are used to cremate the remains of all shades. But did you know that these redwood pyre logs are the only log that can be used to cremate the Eurium remains? However, if you're wanting to do this, then that will require a level 95 in the fire making skill. That is so you can light the Urium remains, and if you do that, then you will be granted 500 fire making experience. Because Sacred Oil has a grand exchange buy limit of only 2000 every 4 hours, and if you're wanting to do this method, it might be better for you all to buy the Sacred Oil in bulk. I would recommend either you buy this in your downtime when you are not on the game. Or if you are sleeping, that is a good time to buy these sacred oils. Or even if you are working, that could be a good time to buy these sacred oils as well. As this might take several hours for you to be able to buy as many as you need. And after you've managed to get all of the sacred oils that you need, and all of the redwood logs that you need to be able to do this method, then you are good to go. But now let's go over the inventory alignments and what you need to be doing. I'll also show you a quick invent as well so let's begin the inventory arrangement and the method of withdrawing and depositing these items from your bank are both very important and i will just run down on what you should be doing the first of all you'll want to withdraw 14 redwood logs and then align them into two separate columns the first column should be redwood logs and then it wants to be mr column and then the third column wants to be redwood logs also after you've got that set up then you can go ahead and withdraw 14 sacred oils and then they will automatically be arranged into two separate columns as well then you can go ahead and use your sacred oil on the logs and turn them all into redwood pile logs now let's go ahead with the banking bit so we can show you the best way to bank it so you don't have to keep arranging your inventory so after you have managed to make all of your pile logs, if you open your bank and only deposit the redwood pile logs, then that will free up two columns. And then go ahead and withdraw 14 redwood logs into them empty two columns. And then after that, we can deposit the empty vials. And then again, like I said, you'll be left with two empty columns. And then that is what you should be filling your sacred oil with. You should be putting them into these two columns. And then after that, you can just go ahead and rinse and repeat this process. And because there isn't anything left to say, let's jump over to the final price check so we can see how many pile logs we've actually managed to make over this one hour and to see how much money will be given away in this video. So welcome to the final price check of making redwood pile logs. And here in my event is all of the logs we have managed to make over this one hour. So over this hour, we managed to make ourselves 2,800 redwood pile logs. And I will just bring the picture on screen. And we bought 3,000 sacred oil and 3,000 redwood logs. So if we go ahead and just times the price we paid for each item by 2,800, because that is how many we made, then that will give us our investment. So 2,800 times that by the price we paid for each oil, and we paid 2,000 coins for each oil. So that is 5.6 million coins. So again, 2,800 
times that by the price we paid for one red the blog which was 416 coins so let's go ahead and times that by 416 and then that will give us the price we paid for the redwood logs and that was 1.164 million and if we go ahead and add on the price we paid for the sacred oils so our initial investment for this video was 6,764,800 gp well now go ahead and copy that and then we'll get rid of it and then we can go ahead now and price check this so one hour of making redwood pyre logs comes out to be eight million five hundred and forty two thousand and eight hundred gp so we'll go ahead and put that in the calculator so eight five four two eight zero zero we'll go ahead and take away our investment which was six seven six four eight zero zero so our profits for this video is coming out to be 1,778,000 flat. So a massive amount of profit. And we didn't even calculate the empty vials back in that. Um, a little bit click intensive, but a massive reward for it. Welcome to season eight of Test Nurse House Wiki Money Maker Methods. And today's money maker is going to be Fletching U Longbows. And the requirements you will need to be able to do this method are the following. First of all, you'll need to have at least a level 70 in your fletching skill, as this is required for us to be able to fletch these bows. And the only other requirement for this method is to have around 1 million coins in starting capital, as you will need this so we can buy all of the bow strings and all of the unstrung bows we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now, let's go over our inventory. And for our inventory for this video, all I have is 14 bow strings and 14 U long bows unstrung. And because we will be using one on the other, I would suggest standing near a bank. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep running back to a bank, which is quite stupid. Then all we have to do after we've got 14 of each is use one on the other and just hold our space back down. And then it will craft or fletch all of these bows into long bows. But now let's go over some information about this method. The U longbow is a longbow that can hold arrows up to root, and this U longbow requires a range level of 40 or higher to be used. And players can make a U longbow through the fletching skill, and this will require a level 70 in that said skill. And normally, players would first need to go and cut some U logs, and then cut these logs into U longbows, and then they would have to go and string them. And first of all, you'd have to go and pick some flax, and then spin that flax into bowstrings. And if you were wanting to do this, then this will grant 150 fletching experience. I'm pretty sure you'd get about five experience in crafting as well or whatever skill it is. However, because of the magic of the Grand Exchange, we can just skip the first process and just buy everything we need from the Grand Exchange and then we can just fletch these bows a lot quicker. So uh, let's jump over to that now so we can see what we're actually doing. So what we'll be doing in this method is first of all, we will be buying all of the materials we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour from the Grand Exchange. And if you were following this method, Method to make money then I would recommend for you to buy everything in bulk this means don't just buy what you need for one hour if you've got the money and the resources buy stuff what you need for like five or six hours because this is really really afk you can make a decent amount of money from doing this plus it's decent fletching xp as well so it could be a good way to train your skills i'll just show you a couple of examples on uh, how much you can make while doing this method first of all if we are doing the first method and the uh, the first method is cutting the logs ourselves or just buying the logs from the Grand Exchange and then fletching them into unstrung bows. So if we're doing this and while I'm researching this video and while I'm making the script for this video, fletching a U longbow from logs is um, 187 coins in profit. But bear in mind this will take a lot longer than what it would do if you just bought the unstrung bow from the Grand Exchange and then just got on with your day or with a string in them. But let's say we made a thousand of them doing it this method, then this would net us a profit of around 187,000 coins. However, for the second example, and this is the example what we did in this video, uh, we managed to just buy everything from the Grand Exchange. This kind of limits your profits a little bit, but it is a lot quicker because we don't have to cut them ourselves. But let's say we did this, this would make us around 114 coins profit, that is per bow. Uh, so it is a little bit of a drop from 187, but bear in mind, like I said, this is a lot quicker than what it would be if we went and then had to fletch the bows ourselves. But let's say we did this again for a thousand bows, this would make us around about 114,000 coins, but like I said, it is a lot quicker doing it this method. It's a little bit less XP because you're not cutting the logs into bows. You're just stringing them. And um, with that being said, now let's jump over to the price check so we can see how many long bows we've managed to fletch over this one hour. 
and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away also. If you guys want, you can join my clan chat for all the latest updates and to know when new videos are going live, just like this one you're watching right now. Hello and welcome to the final prize check of stringing you longbows and here in my event is all of the longbows we've managed to string over this one hour. So over this one hour we've managed to string 2408 longbows which is not too bad at all to be fair. So like always in these prize checks we will be bringing up a picture on screen so we can see how much we've bought our resources for and we'll also be bringing up a calculator. That way we can see how much money we have earned in this video. So let's go ahead and bring up them two things now. So for the price we paid for these longbows, we paid 79 coins each for the bow strings and we paid 397 coins each for the U longbows on strung. And as we said previously, we managed to make 2,408. So if that is the first number we punch into the calculator, then if we times that by the price of one bow string, which is 79 GP, then that comes out to be 190,000 coins. So we'll now just go ahead and copy that and then we'll get rid of it. And again, two, four zero eight for how many we made times that by for the price of one u longbow on strong which is 397 and that comes up to be 955,000 coins and then if we go ahead and add the price back on the, the uh, bowstrings then that will bring us our uh, investment for this video so our investment for this video is 1,146,208 GP which again is not really too bad at all to be fair but like always we'll go ahead and copy that number now we can go ahead and open up our price check so 2,408 U longbows comes out to be 1,367,744 GP so if we now go ahead and punch that number into the calculator so one three uh, six seven seven double four and then we go ahead and take away our investment for this video and then that will be leaving us with our profit so the profit of one hour from stringing you longbows comes out to be 221,536 gp welcome to season eight of test Norris wiki money making methods and today's money maker is going to be making ultra compost and the only requirement you need to be able to do this method is around 1 million coins in starting capital as you will need this so you can buy all of the super compost and all of the volcanic ash that you will need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now let's go over my inventory. As we are bank standing in this video, all I have for my inventory is a stack of volcanic ash. And because this item is stackable, then you can just bring out all of the volcanic ash that you have. This saves you going back into your bank and bringing more out. And then for the rest of my inventory, all I have is 27 buckets of super compost, as you need this to be able to make ultra compost. But now let's go over some information about this method. Ultra compost is the highest level of compost and is an essential component to high level farming. And due to its high demand, it often sells for more than the Grand Exchange guide price. So these profits could become very, very good. If you're wanting to do this method, then it involves creating ultra compost by using two volcanic ash on one single super compost. And each ultra compost takes two volcanic ash and one super compost to create. Creating ultra compost uses the standard crafting dialogue, so it is possible to process a full inventory of 27 super compost without having to click on them manually. And this means more AFK time. And if you're like me, you, then you're gonna love AFK time. But a full inventory takes about 36 seconds to finish. And as I'm researching this method, super compost can be purchased from the Grand Exchange for around 89 coins. Likewise, volcanic ash can also be purchased from the Grand Exchange. This comes in at a price of 75 coins each, or you could gather this by mining ash piles that are located on Fossil Island. But as this video is very short and sweet today, and because there isn't anything left to say about this method, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much ultra compost we've managed to make, and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed, so if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome back to the final price check of making ultra compost and here in my event is all of the compost we have managed to make over this one hour. So over this one hour we have managed to make ourselves 2664 ultra compost which is not too bad at all to be fair. So now let's go ahead and just load a calculator on screen and then we'll bring up the picture of our investment. So the price we paid for everything was we paid 105 coins per volcanic ash and we needed two of them per ultra compost. So if we go ahead and times one 5 times that by 2664 
which is 279,000. Then again, if we go ahead and times that by two, then that will give us all of the uh, volcanic ash that we used. And that comes out to be 559,400. 40 GP. We'll go ahead and just copy that number quickly. 2,664. Then if we go ahead and times that by the super compost, which was only 45 coins each, we'll go ahead and times that by 45. Then that comes out to be 119,880 GP. Then if we go ahead and add in our investment for the volcanic ash, and then that will give us our total investment for this video. So our total investment for this video was 679,320 GP. So now if we go ahead and just copy that number, then we can open up a price check. And now we've got a price check open, let's go ahead and just add in all of these ultra composts. So one out of making ultra compost comes out to be 1,078,920 GP. So now we'll just go ahead and put that in the calculator and then we will go ahead and take away our investment. So our investment for this video was 679,320 GP. So one hour of making ultra compost comes out to be 399,600 GP. And today's money maker is going to be mining basalt. If you guys want, you can join my clan chat for all the latest updates and to know when new videos are going live, just like this one you're watching right now. The requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you will need to have completed the making friends with my arm quest, as you need this to have access to the island of Wees, where the salt mine is located. Secondly, you'll want to have at least a level 72 in your mining skill. This is so you can actually mine this basalt. I would also recommend for you all to bring the best pickaxe that you can use. For now, let's go over my inventory. As we are gathering in this video, I do not have an inventory set up, but for my gear, that is on screen and I will run through it for you all now. So as you all can see, I'm using a full Prospector outfit, although I'm not too sure whether the boost actually works here or not. My pickaxe of choice for this video is going to be the Dragon Pickaxe, as this is the best pickaxe that I can use at my level. And once again, if you cannot afford this or you don't have access to this, then you can also bring a Rune Pickaxe or whatever best pickaxe that you can afford. And rounding out my gear for this video is a pair of expert mining gloves and a celestial ring. But once again, I'm not really too sure if the boosts actually work here. But now let's go over some information about this method. Basalt is a rock that can be mined in the salt mine underneath Wees. You will need to have completed the Making Friends with My Arm quest and this will require a level 72 in the mining skill and this will grant the player 5 mining experience each time they manage to mine a basalt successfully. This basalt can be used with tea salt along with earth salt or eef salt to create either icy basalt or stony basalt. And if the player is wanting to make some icy basalt then they will need one single basalt one single tea salt and then a further three eve salts to make one single icy basalt and this icy basalt can then be used to teleport you to the island of Wees and this will put you near the herb patches just outside of the place we are mining these basalts and likewise if the player is wanting to make a stony basalt then they will need one single basalt one single tea salt and then a further three ert salts and this will make one single stony basalt and just like the icy basalt this can be used as a teleport and this stony basalt will teleport you to the troll stronghold entrance and this location is just below the climbing rock shock and once again if you're using this to teleport then the stony basalt will be consumed afterwards and while we are gathering basalt in this salt mine it will become apparent to you that there isn't a bank nor a bank deposit box nearby but don't be deterred as you can easily note this basalt by going upstairs and using the basalt on the npc called snowflake and she is just located just up the stairs and she will know all of the basalt for you for completely no charge at all. But as there isn't anything left to say and because we're running out of things to say in this video, let's jump over to the final price check so we can see how much basalt we've managed to mine over this one hour and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed, so if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome to the final price check of mining basalt. 
And here my event is all of the basalt we have managed to mine over this one hour. So we've actually managed to mine 865 basalt, which is decent, I think. I was going balls against the wall and I don't really think you would be able to get many more than this. If you can, I'd probably say the most you could probably get is about 900 because I feel like I did this quite effectively and I only managed to get 865. But let's go ahead and price check this. So one hour of mining basalts comes out to be, and because there was no investment in this video, this is all just pure your profit but like i said one out of mine and basalts comes out to be 762,930 gp which is not too bad at all to be honest and today's money maker is going to be mixing guam potions the requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have completed the Druidic Ritual Quest, as this will grant you access to the Herblore skill. Secondly, you'll want to have at least a level 3 in your Herblore skill, as this is required so you can actually mix these potions. So now let's go over my inventory. As we are bank standing in this video, I do not have a gear set up. But for my inventory for this video, all I have is 14 bars of water and 14 guams. And to do this method, all you need to do is use one of these guams on a vial of water and then hold your space bar. And this will automatically craft or mix the 14 vials for you. But now let's go over some information about this method. Guam Potion is an unfinished potion made by using a guam leaf on a vial of water. This requires the player to have at least a level 3 in the Herblore skill and the completion of the Druidic Ritual Quest. Guam Potions are used to create attack potions. They can do this by using an Eye of Newt on a guam potion and this will grant the player with 25 Herblore experience. And like previously, this player will then be left with a attack potion. And this attack potion will have 3 doses. And did you know that these attack potions are the first potion that the player can make or mix with their herblore skill? But going back to guam potions and because adding clean guams to a vial of water gives no experience for the player, then a lot of players will avoid making them and then they will want to buy them directly from the Grand Exchange. And because the players want to do this, then this will open up a massive opportunity for players like us to make guam potions for profit. And if you're wanting to do this method, then I would recommend for you to test the market first. You could easily do this by just mixing one guam potion together and selling it on the Grand Exchange to see if this is still profitable. And if you're efficient enough then you can mix up to 4100 potions an hour. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many potions we have managed to mix over this hour. And then we can see how much money we were giving away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed. So if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making a guam potions. This money maker was basically for anyone who has not really been following the channel for very long and they are wanting to make a little bit of starting money. But regardless, let, let's go ahead and bring up a calculator. For the picture on screen, we paid 56 coins each for a guam and 5 coins each for a vial of water. We obviously made 3,920 of them. So uh, let's just go ahead and go 3,920. If we times that by 5 coins for one vial of water so for our vials of water that comes out to be 19,600 we'll go ahead and just copy that number and for all of these guams we paid 56 coins each so we'll go ahead and times 56 by the amount we made which was 3,920 so 3,920 and that comes out to be 219,520. Then we'll go ahead and add in our investment for our vials of water, which was 19,600 coins. So our total investment for this video was 239,120 GP. And now we'll go ahead and copy that number. So now, after we've done all that, we can go ahead and actually price check these Guam potions. And they come out to be 376,320 GP, which is not too bad to be fair. And if we go ahead now and throw that in the calculator, so 376, 320, and then we go ahead and take away our investment for this video, which was 239,120 GP, which means one hour of making guam potions comes out to be a whopping 137,200 GP. And today's money maker is going to be cooking sea turtles. Subscribe to save this dosser. 
And the requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have at least a level 99 in your cooking skill, as you will want to be wearing your cooking cape when cooking these sea turtles. Because if you don't have 99 and you don't wear the cooking cape, then you can still burn these fish. Secondly, you'll want to have at least 700 to 800,000 coins in starting capital, as you'll need this so you can buy all the sea turtles. You need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now let's go over my inventory. For my gear in this video, all I am wearing is a cooking cape as I need to wear this so I don't burn any of these turtles. For my inventory, all I have is just 28 uncooked sea turtles as this is what we are cooking in this video. Now let's go over some information about this method. If you guys want, you can join my clan chat for all the latest updates and to know when new videos are going live, just like this one you are watching right now. These raw turtles can be caught with a level 79 in the fishing skill. They can be caught while playing the fishing trawler minigame or from the Temporus reward pool or while drift net fishing at Fossil Island. Did you know these sea turtles can be used as an offering to enchant a liar? With level 99 cooking, there is still about a 23% chance of a sea turtle being burnt. This will disappear if the player is wearing a cooking cape while cooking these sea turtles as this will prevent the player from burning them. And every time the player manages to cook a sea turtle successfully, then the player will be granted with 211.3 cooking experience. And after you've cooked all the sea turtles, then they can be used as a food source. And when these turtles are eaten, then they will heal up to 21 hit points. If you don't have 99 cooking, then I would recommend for you to cook these sea turtles on the clay ovens within the Hostidious kitchen, as this provides the player the best chances to successfully cook them. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check, so we can see how many turtles we've managed to cook over this one hour, and to see how much money will be given away in today's video. Hello and welcome to the final price check of cooking these sea turtles and here in my invent of all of the sea turtles we've managed to cook over this one hour and we managed to cook 1456 sea turtles which is decent to be honest uh, but now let's jump over to the calculator for all these sea turtles we paid 533 coins each and we managed to cook 1450 so if we go ahead and times that by 1456 so our total investment for this video was 776,048 GP we will now just go ahead and copy that number and now if we go ahead and just open up the price check and one hour of cooking sea turtles comes out to be 1,188,096 GP so we go ahead now and type that in the calculator so 1188096 and we go ahead and take away our investment for this video which was 776,048 GP then we will be left with our net profit so our net profit for this video was 412,048 GP and today's money maker is going to be crafting you birdhouses the requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have a crafting level of at least 60. This is so you can actually make these bird houses. And if you're wanting to use them afterwards, then you will need a level of 59 in your hunting skill. And secondly, you'll want to have at least 3 million coins in starting capital. This is so you can buy everything we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. And obviously, you will need a hammer and chisel in your inventory. But now let's go over my inventory. As we are bank standing in this video, we do not have a gear setup. For my inventory, all you will need is one chisel and one hammer. And for the rest of your inventory, you will need to have 13 clockworks and 13 U logs, as we are making U birdhouses in this video. And now let's go over some information about this method. A U birdhouse is used to set up birdhouse traps. You can set these up on Fossil Island and this will require a level 59 in your hunting skill. However, they can be crafted if the player has at least a level 60 in their crafting skill. And to craft these birdhouses, the player will need to have at least one set of U-logs and one single clockwork, alongside a hammer and a chisel in their inventory. And if you have all of these items, then you can just use one clockwork on one pair of U-logs and your character will start to craft them. Each birdhouse that you craft will take two game ticks, and this is equivalent to around 1.2 seconds in real time. And once you have finished crafting, the player will then be rewarded with 45 crafting experience. After you've crafted all the birdhouses that you want, you can decide to place these in the birdhouse spaces. And these locations are on Fossil Island. 
I will also put a picture on screen to show you where the two locations are and you can use two birdhouses in each location and once you have placed the birdhouses then you will need to fill them and to do that you will need a handful of seeds first of all you can use hop seeds you will need 10 of these hop seeds to fill your traps unless you are filling the trap with a seed called wild blood then you only need five of them if you are wanting to you can decide to fill these traps with 10 allotment seeds and equally you could decide to fill them with 10 flower seeds and if you really wanted to you could fill these with 10 herb seeds as well and this will also require 10 seeds but for the majority of people they will decide to fill their traps with hop seeds as these are very easy to obtain and you can buy them from the grand exchange for a couple of coins but after your trap has been placed and it has been filled with whatever seeds you decide then you will need to wait 50 minutes before you can go and check your trap and once you have managed to check the trap the player will then be rewarded with an additional 1020 hunter experience and finally because a lot of players who do this don't want to make the birdhouses and they will just decide to buy them directly from the grand exchange and this will open up an opportunity for players like us to make birdhouses for profit and as of this recording you can make around 200 coins per trap that you make but as there isn't anything left to say let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many traps we've managed to make over this one hour and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video subscribe to save this data welcome to the final price check of making these u birdhouses and here in my invent is all of the birdhouses that we have managed to make over this one hour over this one hour we have managed to make 1768 birdhouses so we go ahead and bring a calculator on screen so for these birdhouses we paid 229 coins for one new log and 966 coins for one clockwork so if we go ahead and times 229 which was the price of one new log by the amount we managed to use which was 1768 and that comes out to be 404,872 gp we'll go ahead and copy that number and if we go and times 1700 768 the money we paid for each clockwork which was 966 that is 1.7 million then if we go ahead and add on our investment for the u logs our total investment for this video is 2,112,760 gp so now if we go ahead and copy that number then we can go over to the price check and one hour of making u bird houses comes out to be 2,531,776 GP. Now if we go back to the calculator and type that in, so 2531776. And then if we go ahead and take away our investment for this video, which was 2,112,760, then our total profit in this video comes out to be 419,016 GP. And today's money maker is going to be mixing Haraland the potions. The requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have completed the druidic ritual quest and to have a herbal level of at least 22. This is so you can actually mix these potions. Secondly, you'll want to have at least 2 million coins in starting capital. This is so we can buy all of the supplies we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now let's go over my inventory. As we are bank standing in today's video, we do not have a gear set up. But for my inventory, you'll want to have 14 vials of water, 14 clean Haralander herbs. And to do this method, all you have to do is use one on the other and then press your space bar. But now let's go over some information about this method. A Haralander potion is an unfinished potion made by using a Haralander on a vial of water. And this will require the player to have at least a level 22 in the herb or skill, so then it can be mixed. Because these are often used to train Herblore and adding a clean Haralander to a vial of water doesn't give any experience then a lot of players will avoid doing this and instead will buy them directly from the Grand Exchange and because players will decide to do this this opens up an opportunity for us to mix these potions for profit and as of this recording you can make around 70 coins in profit per potion that you mix. Haralander potions, like the majority of other potions, can have a secondary supply added to them. And I will just list off the ones that can be added to these Haralander potions. If the player decides to use a volcanic ash with one of these potions, then that will result in a compost potion being mixed. And this will grant the player with 60 herb lore experience. 
Also, with level 22 Herblore, the player can decide to make a restore potion, and to do that, they will need to add a red spider egg to their Haraland potion. And once they have done this, the player will then be granted with 62.5 experience. At level 26 Herblore, the player can use a pile of chocolate dust with their Haralander potion, and once this is mixed, this will turn into an energy potion, and the player will be granted with 67.5 experience. And finally, when the player manages to reach level 36 Herblore, then they have the opportunity to mix Goat Horn Dust with these Haralander potions to make a combat potion. And if the player decides to do this, then they will be granted with 84 Herblore experience. But do bear in mind, if you decide to mix any of these potions, then you will more than likely lose all the profit you were set to gain from doing this moneymaker. So I would instead just recommend for you to sell these unfinished Haralander potions to the Grand Exchange. But with all that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many potions we've managed to mix over this one hour. And then we can see how much money it will be given away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed. So if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making Haralander potions and here in my event is all of the potions we have managed to make over this one hour. So over this one hour we managed to make 3920 Haralander potions. So if now we bring up the calculator then we can see our investment for this video. So for our investments for this video we paid 419 coins each for the Haralanders and 4 coins each for the vials of water. So in the calculator, if we go and type in 419, we times that by the amount of Haralanders we made, which was 3,920. That will give us our biggest investment, which was 1,642,480 GP. So we go ahead and copy that number. Then if we go ahead and type in 3920 times that by the price of one vial of water which is 4 coins and then that is 15,680 GP. Then if we go ahead and add that to the price of that each Haralander, our investment for this video was 1,658,160 GP. Now we'll go ahead and just copy that number. Now we can go ahead and just put this in the price check. So one hour of mixing Haralander potions comes out to be 2,073,680 GP. So now if we go back to the calculator, type in that number which is 20 seven three six eight zero we go ahead and take away the investment which was one six five eight one six zero but the profit we made in today's video is four hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred and twenty gp and today's money maker is going to be making raw summer pies the requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have a cooking level of at least level 95. This is so we can construct these summer pies. And secondly, you'll want to have around 500,000 coins in starting cash as this is required so we can buy all of the ingredients that we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now let's go over my inventory. As we are bank standing in today's video, we do not have a gear setup. All I have in my inventory is seven of the or ingredients that we need to be able to put these pies together. And now let's go over some information about this method. Summer pies are made by adding strawberries, watermelons and cooking apples into a pie shell. You'll need to do this in the correct order. And once a raw summer pie is constructed, it can then be cooked on a range. And to do this, the player must have a cooking level of level 95 or higher. And each time you successfully bake a pie, the player will be granted with 260 cooking experience. It is recommended to bake these summer pies while wearing a cooking cape. This is because it has an ability which will prevent the pies from burning. Alternatively, you can bake these pies with the Bake Pie spell on the Lunar Spellbook. And this will require the player to have a level 95 in the cooking skill, that is so you can bake the pies. And this will also have an additional requirement of level 65 in the magic skill. This is so you have the ability and the magic level to cast the spell. And to do this you should withdraw 7 of each ingredients and then use them on the pie shells. First of all you'll want to be starting with the strawberries. You will first use the strawberries on the pie shell and then press your spacebar key. And once you have managed to finalise this you'll be left with 
receive seven parts from a pies and then you can move on to the next step. On the second step of this method you you will then want to use your seven watermelons on the parts of my pies and once again a menu will pop up and then all you have to do is press the space bar key on your keyboard once again and after a short period of time then these will be added to the pie shell and finally the last step in this method is for you to add the cooking apples to the pie shells and like on the previous two steps a menu will pop up again just press the space bar key and after a short period of time you will be left with seven raw summer pies and if you do this efficiently enough you can manage to make upwards of 750 raw summer pies an hour and after you've made all the summer pies that you want you can easily sell these on the grand exchange and you can expect around about 600 coins in profit per pie that you have made but with that being said let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how many pies we've managed to make over this one hour and then we can see how much money it will be given away also subscribe to save this data hello and welcome back to the final price check of making these raw summer pies and here in my invent is all of the summer pies we managed to make over this one hour so over this one hour we managed to make ourselves 728 raw summer pies so if we go ahead and load the picture on screen so everything is on screen now we paid 78 coins each for strawberries 31 coins each for the watermelons 50 coins each for the cooking apples and 309 coins each for the pie shells so if we now go ahead and just times all of them by 728, we first of all go 78 times 728. So the price we paid for the strawberries was 56,784. We'll go ahead and copy that. Then again, we'll go 728. This time we'll times it by 31 for the price of the watermelons, which is 22,568. Then we'll go ahead and add that to the price of the strawberries. So our investment so far is 79,352. We'll go ahead and just copy that. Now, if we go ahead and do 50, which was the price of the cooking apples by 728, that was 36,400 again. We will go and add that to our investment so our investment so far is 115,752 now we'll just go and copy that and then finally if we go ahead and do 309 which was the price of a pie shell we go ahead and times that by 728 then that comes out to be 224,952 and then if we go ahead and add that to our investment so our total investment for this video was 340,704 GP so now we'll just go ahead and copy that number now if we go ahead and just throw all this in the price check so one hour of making raw summer pies comes out to be 765,128 now we'll jump back to the calculator and if we go ahead and type that number in so seven six five one two eight then if we go ahead and take away our investment which was three hundred and forty seven hundred and four so the profit of one hour of making raw summer pies comes out to be four hundred and twenty four thousand four hundred and twenty four gp and today's money maker is going to be pickpocketing paladins. The only requirement you need to be able to do this method is the following. You will need to have at least a level 70 in your thieving skill. However, I wouldn't even try this method until you have at least level 90 in your thieving skill. As because even when you are level 99 in thieving, you can still fail these pickpockets quite often. I would also recommend for you to wear a full rogue outfit as this will give you double loot. But now let's go over my gear and inventory. For my gear for this video it is on screen and I will just run through it for you all now. Most importantly I have a full rogues outfit as like I said this will give me double loot and the only other thing I will be running for my gear in this video is a dodgy necklace as this gives me a chance of avoiding the stun animation when I fail a pickpocket. And for my inventory all I have is some spare dodgy necklaces. I have also left three empty inventory spaces and for the rest of my inventory I have filled this up with jugs of wine as the these heal 11 hit points and they only cost 2 GP to buy. Plus, if you really wanted to, you could sell the jugs back to the Grand Exchange and you can basically get your entire investment back for this. But now let's go over some information about this method. 
These paladins was first added into the game on the 30th of April 2002. They can be found in East Ardoyne, wandering near the castle and the market. Upon the completion of the Songs of the Elves quest, these paladins will also patrol the streets of West Ardoyne. They are from the Ardoyne's Holy Order of Paladins, and this is why they wear the symbol of Saridomen. There are three unique paladins. There is Sir Kyle, Sir Harry and Sir Gerald and these are found in the underground pass and you must kill these three paladins in the underground pass quest in order to obtain their badges and players can pickpocket paladins at level 70 thieving and they will gain 151.8 experience they will also gain 80 coins and 2 chaos runes and pickpocketing these paladins yields large amounts of chaos runes and raw coins which can also be doubled if you are wearing a full rogues outfit. These paladins can be trapped in multiple places around the Ardoin market. The most famous one is in a house directly north of the Silver Star. And if you are lucky enough to find a paladin trapped in here, then it will be trapped in a two tile space, allowing you to pickpocket it quite easily. And in fact, this is where we will be pickpocketing these paladins in this video. As these paladins will hit you quite frequently, even when you are level 99 thieving, it is strongly recommended to wear dodgy necklaces. Like I said, this is so you have a chance of negating the stun effect. If the player wants, they can buy food for a low price from the Ardoin Baker Star. However, I would just tell you to just bring some jugs of wine or something like that because there are two coins each. Plus then you can be refunded back from the Grand Exchange when you sell your empty jugs if you really wanted to but like I said there are only two coins each so it is basically I wouldn't say free money but you're not really spending a great deal and for a quick example for how much you can expect to make while pickpocketing these paladins let's say we are level 70 thieving and we are wearing a full rogues outfit and for the purpose of this we will say that we have our medium Ardoin diaries completed then we can expect to get around 178,000 profit per hour but with that being said let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money we've managed to make by doing this method and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video subscribe to save this data Hello and welcome to the final price check of pickpocketing paladin and here in my invent is all of the loot we managed to get over this one hour. So over this one hour we managed to get around 4000 chaos runes and a little over 150k. But now let's break down the price we invested which was the dodgy necklaces and the profit we managed to get back from them. So if we go ahead and bring up a calculator and then we go ahead and open the price check. So the price of these dodgy necklaces comes out to be 28,000. 782 so we'll just type like the calculator just so then we can copy the number so 28,782 coins we'll go ahead and just copy that and then if we go ahead and go back to the price check and then we go ahead and just throw in all of our chaos runes and all of our coins in so one out of pickpocketing paladins comes out to be 375,648 gp now we just need to go ahead and type that in the calculator so 375 six four eight then we go ahead and take away the investment and the investment for this video was 28,782 GP. So one hour of pickpocket in Paladins comes out to be 346,866 GP. Welcome to season eight of Tess Noah Cyrus Wiki Moneymaker Methods. And today's moneymaker is going to be killing jobsters. The only requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. First and foremost, you'll need to have completed the Tower of Life quest as this will give you access to the Tower of Life basement. Secondly, I would recommend for you guys to have at least level 70s in your combat stats. This is so we can kill these jobsters effectively. To be honest, you could probably kill these with lower combat levels, but you might need to bring a bit of food along with you. But now let's go over my gear and inventory. For my gear in this video, it is on screen and I will just run through it for you all now. First of all, I have both the Bandos chest plate and the Bandos tassets. Running alongside that, I'm using a Nate's Not Face Guard, an Amulet of Torture and a Fire Cape. My weapons of choice for this video is the Abyssal Whip and a Dragon Defender. And rounding out my gear for this video is a pair of Primordial Boots, a pair of Ferocious Gloves and a Berserker Ring in view. For my inventory, all I have is a rune pouch, and this has law, air, and fire runes in it. This is so I can teleport to a bank. 
And to get back from the bank, I'm using my Ardon cape, as this will take me to the monastery, which is very close by. I also have 12 raw lobsters and 12 raw jubilees. And finally, rounding out my inventory, I have one single super attack and one single super strength. But now let's go over some information about this method. These jubsters was first added into the game on the 19th of February 2007 and you can gain access to this area once you have completed the Tower of Life quest. Players can create jubsters in the creature creation in the basement of the Tower of Life. A jubster is a hybrid of a lobster and a jubbly bird. There is six different monsters that can be created in this basement and I will just list them off for you now and what resources you need to be able to make each one. In the northeast area of the basement you can find an altar where you have to place a eye of newt and a feather this will make a newt roost which has a combat level of 19. if you are wanting to use the altar in the northwest side of the basement then you will need to use a cowhide and a unicorn horn on it this will make a level 25 uni cow in the southeast altar you can use a red spider egg with a raw sardine and this will spawn a spideen and this creature will be level 42. At the southwest altar a sword chick can be spawned if you use a raw swordfish and a raw chicken and this creature is level 46. And for the monster we are killing in this video, a jubster can be created on the altar, which is in the east side of the basement. And you will need to use a raw jubbly and a raw lobster on this altar. And the final creature that can be made in this basement is a frog eel. And this can be made by adding a raw cave eel and a pair of giant frog legs to the altar. And this altar is located at the west side of the basement. As we are creating and killing jubsters, then we will be using the altar on the east side of the basement. And once you have placed both of the resources on the altar, and after you have activated it, then the humunculus in the dungeon will create the creature. And finally, did you know that killing these jubsters is a much quicker and a more effective way of obtaining raw jubblies than hunting the jubbly birds? But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money this method has earned us and then we can see how much money will be given away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed, so if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome to the final price check of killing these jubsters. So here in my event is all of the jubbly meat we managed to get back from this video and we managed to get 918 raw jubblies and that comes out to be I'm pretty sure we managed to get it says here 180 kills over this one hour so that's not actually too bad at all to be fair. So now let's uh, throw the picture on screen so then we can see how much we paid for our investment and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in this video. So now the calculator is on screen, we paid 109 coins each for the lobsters and 553 coins each for one raw jubbly. We used 180 of them, so if we go ahead and times 180 by 109, which was the price of one lobster, that comes out to be 19,620 GP. We'll go ahead and copy that, and then if we go ahead and type in 180, times that by the price we paid for a single jubbly, which was 553, that comes out to be 99,540. Then we'll go ahead and add in the price for the lobsters, and that will bring us out to be 119,100. 60 and here in my invent as well is some more supplies we used we used a super strength and a super attack we only used three doses of that and we also used seven monkfish let's go ahead and add in all of the other supplies we used and that comes out to be 8313 so we now go ahead and add that in the calculator so our total investment for this video was 127,473 GP and if we go back to the price check then we can decide to go ahead and throw in all of our raw jubblies we managed to get back from this video which was 918 so one hour of killing jubsters comes out to be 503,064 GP so now we jump back to the calculator and type that into 503 064 and then we go ahead and take away the investment for this video which was 127,473 and that will leave us with our profit so our profit for this video is 375,591 GP. Today's money maker is going to be cooking monkfish. 
that the only requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. First and foremost, you'll want to have at least a level 62 in your cooking skill, as you need this to be able to cook these monkfish. And secondly, I would recommend for you guys to have at least 400,000 coins in starting capital, as you will need this so we can buy all the monkfish we need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. But now let's go over my gear and inventory. For my gear for this video, I am wearing a cooking cape, but if you have level 92 cooking, then you will never burn a monkfish again. And I'll leave a link in the description box down below so you can see all the burn rates for these monkfish. For my inventory for this video, all I have is 28 monkfish, as this is what we are cooking in this video. But now let's go over some information about this method. These monkfish was first added into the game on the 2nd of May 2006. Monkfish can be caught with a small fishing net by players who have a fishing level of 62. And players must have completed the Swan Song quest. This is so we can get access to the fishing location for these monkfish. To cook a monkfish, the player will need to have at least a level 62 in the cooking skill. And each time you successfully cook a monkfish, you will be granted with 150 cooking experience. And if you accidentally burn a monkfish, then you will be left with a burnt monkfish. But I would recommend for you to keep hold of all of your burnt fish, also all of your burnt food because they are still collected. So even though they don't have a proper value in game, they are still have value to other players and other players will actually buy your burnt items from you. And the burn rate for these monkfish varies. It depends on your cooking level. It depends on the items you have equipped and it even depends on if you are cooking them on a range or a fire. So like I stated in the requirement part of this video, I will leave a link in the description box so you can see all of the burnt rates for these monkfish. And did you know catching and cooking a monkfish is needed to complete a task in the hard Western Providence diary? And finally for this video, once you have cooked all the monkfish you want, you can either use these as a food source as these can heal up to 16 hit points or you can sell them to either other players in the game or just do like we did in this video, sell them to the Grand Exchange. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money this method has earned us and we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Subscribe to save this data. Hello and welcome to the final price check of cooking raw monkfish or cooking monkfish and here in my event is all of the monkfish we managed to cook over this one hour. Over this one hour we managed to cook 1456 monkfish which is not too bad to be fair but now let's just jump into the calculator so we'll just load that on screen. So now that the calculator is on screen I will also bring up the picture for all the monkfish so we can see how much we paid for them and it says that we paid 132 coins each so we'll just go ahead and times that by the amount we cooked which was 1456 so today's investment to make this video was 192,192 we'll just go ahead and just copy that number so now if we go ahead and open up the price check and the money we got back from cooking these monkfish comes out to be 465,920 so now if we jump back to the calculator and just type that number in so four six five nine two zero then we go ahead and take away the investment for this video and the investment was one nine two one nine two so one hour of cooking monkfish comes out to be two hundred and seventy three thousand seven hundred and twenty eight gp so today's money maker is going to be blowing on arms the only requirements you need to be able to do is make that follow First and foremost, you will need to have at least a level 46 in your crafting skill as you will need this to be able to blow the molten glass into unpowered orbs. Secondly, I would recommend that you have at least 200,000 coins in starting capital as you will need this so we can buy all of the molten glass we will need to be able to do this method efficiently for one hour. So now let's go over my gear and inventory. As we are bank standing in today's video, I do not have a gear set up. For my inventory for this video, all I have is a glass blowing pipe, and for the remaining 27 slots, I have filled these with molten glass. And now let's go over some information about this method. These unpowered orbs was added into the game on the 18th of March 2002. You can craft these unpowered orbs by blowing molten glass with a glass blowing pipe. To obtain the molten glass, you can either make it or buy it directly from the Grand Exchange if you are a main account. If you are wanting to make it, then I will just list off one way on how you can do so. Firstly, you'll need to have both soda ash and a bucket of sand in your inventory. And then all you need to do is use one of the ingredients on a furnace and then you will start to craft this molten 
glass. And this molten glass will take 1.2 seconds to make, which is equivalent to two game ticks. But now let's go over what you can make with this molten glass. Molten glass is a very good way to train your crafting skill, and many players may decide to train their crafting skill by blowing molten glass. This is because it is a very cheap way to obtain 99 crafting, and secondly it is because it is decently AFK so you could easily do something else on the side. If you're wanting to train your crafting skill this way, then there are many options that you can make by blowing molten glass. I'll just list them off quickly for you all. At level 1 crafting, you'll be able to make a beer glass, and this will give you 17.5 XP. When you get to level 4 crafting, you will now have access to making an empty candle lantern, and this will grant you 19 XP. With level 12 crafting, you can blow this molten glass into oil lamps, and this will grant 25 XP. When you manage to get to level 33 crafting, you will have the ability to make vials, and this will grant 35 XP. Empty fish bowls is up next when you get to level 42 crafting and this will give the player 42.5 XP. And now with the one we're doing in this video which is unpowered orbs and to do this you will need to have a crafting level of 46 and you can expect 52.5 XP back from doing this. And I'm pretty sure this is the only one which will actually grant you some profit by blowing molten glass. At level 49 crafting you can make lantern lenses and this will grant the player 55 crafting XP. And the last thing you can blow this molten glass into is at level 87 crafting and you can make empty light orbs. And this will grant the player 70 crafting XP. And after you've made all of the unpowered orbs like we have in this video, you can either sell them back to the Grand Exchange like we did, or you can keep hold of them and turn them into powered orbs. There are currently four separate orbs that you can make. The first one is air, the second one is water, the third one is earth, and the fourth and final one is fire. But do bear in mind, to do this you will need to have different levels of magic and take them to the right obelisks. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much this method has earned us and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Only 4% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed, so if you aren't already, smash that sub button so you can be notified when new videos are going live. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making unpowered orbs and here in my event is all of the orbs we've managed to make over this one hour. So we managed to make 1808 unpowered orbs which is not too bad to be fair. So let's just bring the picture on screen so we can see how much we paid for the molten glass. So for the price we paid for this molten glass we paid 78 coins each and we'll go ahead and times that by 1808. That is the amount we managed to use. So our total investment for this video was 141,024 GP, which is not too bad. We'll go ahead now and copy that number. And then if we go ahead and open up a price check here, then we go ahead and just add in all of our unpowered orbs. So one hour of making unpowered orbs comes out to be 204,304 GP. With that being said, let's just go ahead and bang that in the calculator. So 204, 204, 304 and then we go ahead and take away our investment so our investment for this video was 141,024 GP so the amount of profit we managed to make only 63,280 GP which is a bit of a letdown welcome to season 8 of Tesno Osiris wiki money making methods and today's money maker is going to be crafting diamond bracelets the only requirements you need to be able to do this method are the following. First and foremost, you'll want to have at least a level 58 in the crafting skill, as you will need this to be able to craft these diamond bracelets. Secondly, I would recommend that you have at least 3 million coins in starting capital, as you will need this to be able to buy all of the ingredients we need, and for this video it is gold bars and diamonds. You will need this so we can do the method efficiently for one hour. Lastly, it's not really a requirement, but I would recommend for you guys to wear some sort of weight reducing clothing as we will be running back and forth between the bank and a furnace. Now let's go over my gear and inventory. Like I just stated, as we are running back and forth from a bank in this video, then I would recommend for you all to wear some sort of weight reducing clothing. And my weight reducing clothing of choice in this video is a full set of graceful. And you can get this by collecting marks of grace while running laps on the rooftop agility courses. For my inventory for this video, all I have is a bracelet mold. And for the rest of my inventory, I split this up between 13 golden bars and 13 diamonds. But now let's go over some information about this method. These diamond bracelets was first added into the game on the 30th of April 2007. The diamond bracelet is a bracelet that players can make by using a gold bar on a furnace. 
while having a diamond and a bracelet mold in their inventory. This will require a crafting level of 58 and this will give 95 experience when made. If players don't have a level 58 in the crafting skill or if they want to craft other pieces of diamond jewellery then they can do and I will just list off the other jewellery that you can make and what level you need to be able to make them. If you have level 43 crafting then you can make a diamond ring and this will grant the player 85 XP and this will also grant you 68 coins in profit per one that you make. Diamond necklaces are up next and if the player has level 56 crafting then you can make them and after you've made them you'll be granted with 90 crafting XP and you can expect to make around 148 coins in profit. At level 58 crafting you can even follow along with this video and do what we did and make diamond bracelets and you can expect to be granted with 95 crafting experience and also you will make around 160 coins in profit per bracelet that you make. And the last piece of jewellery that these diamonds can be crafted into is a diamond amulet. And to craft these the player will need to have a crafting level of at least level 70. And you can expect to get 100 crafting experience per amulet that you make. And you will also be left with around 110 coins per amulet that you make also. But as we are making diamond bracelets in this video, so we are going to stick with those. And after you've made all the bracelets that you want, you can either enchant them with a level 4 enchantment spell. Or you can sell them back to the Grand Exchange like we did in this video. But bear in mind, if you do decide to enchant them, then you will need to have an additional level 57 in your magic skill. This is so you can cast that spell. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money this method has earned us. And then we can also see how much money will be given away in today's video. Subscribe to save this data. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making diamond bracelets and here in my event is all of the bracelets we have managed to make over this one hour. So over this one hour we managed to make 1248 bracelets which is decent to be honest. So if we just go ahead and bring the price we paid on screen and then we also go ahead and bring a calculator. So the price we paid was 1765 for the diamonds and 96 coins for the gold bars. So first of all we will go and times 1765 which was the price of one diamond. We'll go ahead and times that by 1248 and that gives us 2,202,720. Now we'll go ahead and just copy that. Now if we go and put 96 which was the price of a gold bar times that by the amount of bracelets we made and then that gives us a price of 119,808 and if we go ahead and add that to the copied number that will give us our investment for this video and our investment for this video was 2,322,528 GP now we'll just go ahead and copy that so now we will go ahead and open up the price check and um, one hour of making diamond bracelets comes out to be 2,507,232 GP so the price we managed to get back is now in the calculator then if we go ahead and take away the investment this will leave us with our profit for this video and our profit for this video was 184,704 GP and today's money maker is going to be fishing sacred eels obviously for this method you will need a fishing rod and some fishing bait but as I expect that you already know that I will not be using this as an actual requirement the only requirement you need to be able to do this method are the following First and foremost, you'll want to have at least a level 87 in your fishing skill as you will need this so we can catch these sacred eels. Secondly, you will need to have at least a level 72 in your cooking skill. This is so you can dissect these sacred eels into Zora scales. I would also recommend for you all to bring a dragon harpoon and a radar's blessing with you if you have access to these items. If not, it is not really a big deal. But now let's go over my gear and inventory. My gear for this video is on screen and I will just run through it for you all now. Firstly, I have a full set of spirit anglers outfit. But if you have the regular one, then this will work just the exact same. I've also got a dragon harpoon as you can use the special attack with this and this will boost my fishing levels by 3. Lastly, for my gear in this video, I have a radar's blessing 4 as this will give me a slight chance of being able to catch two sacred eels at once which in return will give me more profit. 
And for my inventory for this video, all I have is a knife. This is so I can dissect these eels. I have this near the bottom of my inventory as this will let me click between the eels and the knife more efficiently. And rounding out my inventory, all I have is a fishing rod and 1000 fishing bait as we need both of these to catch these sacred eels. But now let's go over some information about this method. Sacred Eels was first added into the game on the 26th of November 2015. Sacred Eels are a members only fish that can be caught at Zolandra. To catch Sacred Eels the player will need to have a fishing rod and fishing bait in their inventory. Sacred Eels can be caught when the player has at least level 87 in their fishing skill and once the Sacred Eel is caught the player will then be granted with 105 fishing experience. Players can fish for these eels when they have completed the regicide quest as you will need this quest to unlock the area where we are fishing these sacred eels. Before attempting to catch these eels the player must first go and speak to the high priestess in the area. She is the leader of the village of Zalandra. If the player has a minimum cooking level of 72 then they can dissect these eels into or scales. They will need to have a knife in their inventory and click between the two items. Dissecting these eels will give between 3 and 9 Zora scales and this will grant the player between 109 and 127 cooking XP. But do bear in mind the higher your cooking levels the higher the amount of scales you will get as your cooking level affects how many scales you will receive when dissecting these eels. And for example, if you have level 99 cooking, then you can expect to get more scales than you would if you had the bare minimum of 72 cooking. And let's just say, for the purpose of this video, we have a level 97 fishing and level 99 cooking, then we can expect to gain about 23,500 fishing experience. 26,400 cooking experience and around about 1,500 scales per hour. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money this method has earned to us and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Subscribe to save this data. Hello and welcome to the final price check of fishing sacred eels and here in my event is everything that we managed to get over this video. So we managed to use 230 fishing bait and then them sacred eels turned out to be 1687 Zora scales. If you guys want you can factor in the price of all the fishing bait but it's only 690 coins so we'll go ahead and just take away 690 from the final price check. So if we go ahead and add in all of the Zora scales so one hour of fishing sacred eels comes out to be 161,952 and that is the amount I'm going to be giving away but if you guys want you can then just take away 690 coins from that I'm not going to in uh, this video but if you wanted to I'll just bring a calculator on screen so then you can see how much it will be so 161,952 take away 690 so your profit would be 161,262 Hello and welcome to season 8 of Tesno Sarah's wiki money making methods and today's money maker is going to be smithing bronze dart tips the only requirements you'll need to be able to do this method are the following. Most importantly, you'll need to have completed the tourist trap quest, as you will need to have completed this quest so you have access and the ability to make the dart tips. Secondly, you will need to have at least a level 4 in your smithing skill. This is so you can smith these dart tips. But with that being said, let's go over my gear and inventory. As we are running back and forth from a bank in this video, I do not have a gear set up, but if you need to, you can wear weight reducing clothing. This is so you won't run out of run energy. But I don't think this should be a factor really as we are making these dart tips so this means we will be stationary for a long period of time. And for my inventory for this video all I have is a hammer as we need this for when we are smithing these dart tips. And for the rest of my inventory all I have is 27 bronze bars for my first inventory and then for every inventory after that I will only bring 26 bronze bars. This is because after the first inventory we will have all the dart tips we made. I'm keeping track of them in my inventory so they don't mix with the ones I've already got in the bank. But now let's go over some information about this method. Bronze dart tips was first added into the game on the 14th of April 2003. To have access to smith these dart tips the player must first have completed the tourist trap quest. This is because during the quest you will learn the ability to be able to smith these dart tips. 
In this video we are smithing bronze dart tips and to do this the player will need to have at least a level 4 in their smithing skill and you can smith 10 dart tips per bronze bar that you buy. To do this method all you have to do is have a hammer in your inventory and then use a bar of whatever metal you have decided to use on an anvil and in this video we've used bronze bars so then all we have to do after the pop-up box is open is to click on dart tips and then our player will go ahead and do the smithing animation and we'll be left with 10 dart tips per bronze bar in our inventory. And as we're using the Varrock anvil and on average you can smith between 900 and 1000 bars an hour using this anvil and this will calculate you between 9000 and 10,000 dart tips smithed per hour. And if you guys want some money or like a rough estimate of the amount you can earn, going off the two numbers we said, which is 900 and 1000, you can earn around 186,000 coins to 207,000 coins. This is all calculated for one hour trips. But after you've finished smithing all the dart tips that you want or that you need, you can either sell these on the Grand Exchange like we did in this video, or you can add feathers to them. And to add a feather to a dart tip, all you have to do is use one on the other. But if you do this, do bear in mind that you'll probably lose all of the profit you would have made by making dart tips in general. So because of this, I would just advise you to just sell all of your dart tips on the Grand Exchange. And then if you are wanting some darts, then I would just sell all your dart tips and then just buy some darts for the lower price. That way you are still making some money. And to maximize your profits when selling all of the dart tips you have made, you can easily do this by buying one dart tip directly from the Grand Exchange. This way it will give you a price of what people are actually buying dart tips for. Then you can sell yours for either one GP less than that if you want to undercut, or if you're not too bothered about how long it will take you to sell them, you can sell them for the, the exact price you bought the dart tip for. But with that being said, let's jump on over to the final price check so we can see how much money this method has earned us and then we can see how much money we'll be giving away in today's video. Subscribe to save this stuff sir. Hello and welcome to the final price check of making bronze dart tips. And here in my event is all of the dart tips we managed to make over this one hour. So over this one hour we managed to make 9,760 dart tips which comes out to 976 bronze bars used so now we'll just go ahead and bring the bronze bar price on screen and we'll also go ahead and bring a calculator on screen also the price we paid for one bronze bar was 135 coins we'll go ahead and times that by 976 which is how many we used so our investment for this video was 131,760 gp we'll just go ahead and copy that number then get rid of it and then if we go ahead and open up a price check and the amount of money we got back and one hour of making bronze dart tips comes out to be 361,120 GP. Now if we go ahead and just put that in the calculator, so 361120. Go ahead and take away the investment, and the investment was 131760. So today's profit is 229,360 GP. Welcome to the Money Maker leaderboard. On this leaderboard, I rank the money makers after I tried them, and I split it into four columns. The first column is for the method I was using. The second column is for the money this method has earned me. Column 3 is for the order the video is ranking compared to the order I release the videos in. And column 4 is for difficulty, as if they are hard to do, they will rank it as red hard. And likewise, if they are easy to do, then I will rank it as green easy. And for any other methods that fall in between both of these, these will be ranked as yellow medium. This is for my medium tier. So today's money makeup was smithing bronze dart tips. And this is made with a profit of 229,360 GP. And this is somewhere just below like the average money maker, what I post on the channel. And who would have thought that making redwood pyre logs right at the start of the season would have stayed at the top spot. I feel like when we did that money maker, we got very, very lucky at the time that we did it. But this money maker in general is a solid money maker, especially if you are wanting some AFK smithing XP. Anyways, this is the last episode on season eight and we do have another season coming for you guys. I do need to tailor a few things. Regardless of that, today's money maker, we put it as easy to do. That is because all you need is level four smithing and a tourist trap quest. And a lot of people do the tourist trap quest to get the starter agility levels. But today's winner for this video and the final winner on 
this season was the Crod Man. So congratulations to you once again. And for the final time on this season, let's go ahead and close out this video. So if you guys have enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe. It really will help the channel grow and it really will push it towards other people who need these videos. But regardless, I've been Ben. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this moneymaker and I also hope you all have all enjoyed this entire season of moneymakers and um, I will catch you on the next season. Goodbye. If you guys are looking around for your newest game, make sure to check out cdkeys.com because they have the cheapest CD keys available on the internet for pretty much every game, even new releases. I'll drop a link down below if you guys want to check them out.